Guys, we have had a lot of Destiny 2 stuff to talk about over the past couple of days with the new update. And of course, it makes sense because Bungie are switching up an entire game as we go into year two of Destiny 2. Today, I do have a couple more news things that I wanted to talk about. I am going to get more into weapons and sandbox changes over the next couple of days. But in this video, we're going to talk about some new items, materials, ways that we'll upgrade subclass paths to get the new supers in Forsaken, an unexpected vendor that we might be seeing in the game, Got a couple of other things to round up about characters and vendors as well. A new panic button item, which allows you to reset the state of an activity. We'll talk about how that works. New prime engrams that are coming into the game. Other consumables, which are going to be brand new for Forsaken. I look at a few new weapons and a bunch of other stuff. So guys, if you do enjoy the video, as always, a rating below is very much appreciated. You can feel free to hit subscribe if you do enjoy the content and you want to keep up to date with Destiny 2 and Forsaken. But let's get into the new stuff. So of course the database has been updated and now we can get a look at a lot of items, quests, exotics and things to look forward to in the Forsaken expansion. Let's talk about acquiring new supers and upgrades for subclasses. We do have an item here called Seed of Light. It's an exotic consumable, a manifestation of the traveler's power filled with potential. This will unlock a new path in the subclass of your choice. This item is very rare and using it consumes it. So that's actually how we will begin the process of upgrading a new subclass class tree. We don't know exactly how we will get the item just yet, but we will also require a vision of a leaf. Use this item to upgrade your new subclass paths. So it looks like this could be replacing the current subclass upgrade points that we have, and we'll discover exactly how we'll get all of the full upgrades when the DLC launches. Next though, I wanted to talk about a new character and vendor in the game. So you may remember I spoke about a character called Yuna. This was actually a few weeks back when Bungie announced the Korean version of Destiny 2. Yuna is going to be the Eververse vendor in the Korean version, but strangely enough, there are some quest steps that we have in the current version of the game. And you can see they have the Forsaken icon on them. Speak with Yuna. Yuna from the Magungwa Legion, I believe that's how you say that, wishes to meet you, find her in the bazaar. And we have an objective to speak with Yuna right there. And there's also a linked quest right here, the Legion's Calling, which obviously references the kind of group that Yuna is a part of. So I thought I'd point these out. This could mean that Yuna is going to be in all versions of the game. It would make sense if the games were somewhat unified. If we look at the visual style of the character as well, it's possible that we could see this vendor appear in something like Festival of the Lost, which is confirmed confirmed to be returning in October this year. So certainly pretty interesting stuff. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about that down below. But also on the subject of new characters and vendors, right here if you head to this spot in the tower, spoiler alert, you can actually see the gambit flags and a bunch of stuff on the ground around here. And this is where the drifter is actually going to be housed in the tower. So drifter will be a vendor that we'll be able to visit in the tower. And this is the location where we'll actually find the character. And of course, gambit will have its own set of kind of objectives a ranking system, bounties, rewards. So that's going to be really cool. And this is where we'll be able to, you know, unlock a lot of that stuff via the vendor. Yesterday I spoke about some weapons and armor that have been dropping early inside of this update. And these have actually been coming from the Mars Flashpoint reward this week. It turns out that this was not intentional. I guess everyone kind of assumed it was intentional to get people hyped up and stuff. But these actually shouldn't have been dropping, so that's pretty interesting. The White Wolf actually posted a clip right here. We can see the wrong side of right, a scout rifle. It's got two intrinsic bonuses. We have Outlaw as well as Triple Tap. And then there are a series of different trackers that will become active in Forsaken. This is as part of the masterwork for the weapon. And you're seeing some of the gameplay of that in the background. Also a big thanks to my pal Leo on Twitter who sent me some clips of the Dustrock Blues shotgun. This one dropped with Threat Detector as well as Auto Loading Holster. And we can see it in action here a little bit. So this is just a little bit of new gameplay of some of these weapons in the background. But further on the subject of new and interesting items, Items. There is an item here called a panic button. Are you blocked by some issue or another? Use this item to reset the state of all non-planet launched activities. 
So it sounds like this actually has the capacity to kind of restart the activity that you're in. So maybe you could use it in a nightfall, for example. Something crazy, your friend lagged out, or you had to go and answer the door or something like that. It looks like that's what this item will be for, but we'll have to wait and see exactly what kinds of activities it will apply to and when it can be used, as well as how we actually get them. The database is also showing a bunch of different tokens. These are obviously related to different characters. The worthless token of Slain Minotaur, Sworn Enemy of Sir Ido. So obviously Dreaming City related items, we don't know how we'll get them or what they will unlock. These are a little bit easier to understand though. We've got Charges of Light, so there are three different tiers of these. Tier 1, 2 and 3. And these offerings to the Blind Well will provide a small charge to the mechanism. So it sounds like this is how you activate different versions of the Blind Dwell, the new kind of PvE mode in the Dreaming City. I haven't found too many details about these just yet, but it looks like we're going to be getting a new Engram type called a Prime Engram. And this right here is a Prime Engram Tracker, a rare chance to receive a Prime Engram by defeating an elite enemy or completing a Crucible match. So like I said, it looks like a new type of Engram, could maybe be linked to Eververse or indeed Yuna, if we are going to be getting that vendor across all different versions of the game. That isn't entirely clear just yet. We can finally get a bit of an idea about the new Masterwork system though. Of course we know that there will be 10 different tiers of Masterwork for weapons. When it comes to armor pieces we can see here that there will be five tiers. So that's essentially going to be pretty similar to what we have right now apart from you do get incremental benefits. So tier one armor will keep the base stats for the armor piece but you can obviously select different stats so resilience, recovery, mobility. Tier two on resilience will slightly improve resilience, tier 3 moderately improves it, tier 4 remarkably improves it, and tier 5 is a maximized resistance. And like I said, this will work across the different stats. So that is essentially the masterworks for legendary armor. We do have more interesting items here. So these are a bunch of different consumables from Forsaken, the offering to the Oracle, the pure matter glass lens, Rainmaker, which I spoke about before, a glimmer extractor found in scraps of a lucky dismantle. And basically this has the ability to grant you more glimmer when you're killing enemies. Some folks have actually been getting these dropped in game right now by deleting pieces of early forsaken gear. So it's possible that some of these other consumables could come from doing that as well. You may remember we spoke about a legendary infusion material called an Apex Catalyst. This was quite a while ago when Curse of Osiris dropped. It has been updated once again. I'm pretty sure every season it's seen some kind of change but we still haven't seen it in the game. It is now called a core of light and you can use it to infuse an item into a piece of gear that you wish to strengthen. We don't know exactly how that works if it provides power level or somehow provides upgrades to a piece of gear but it's something we can expect to see in Forsaken. There are also some new bounties, a new type of bounty called a scrapper bounty and they seem to be all focused on collecting loot caches in various different locations. So we can see loot the cache in the drain, a lost sector in the outskirts of the EDZ, and there are a bunch of different locations that you can actually go to pick these different caches up. So there's yet another type of bounty with yet another potential reward that we'll see in the DLC. Of course, we have heard about the character boost. We can actually see the item, advance this character to level 30 and start the Forsaken campaign. This boost is included free with Destiny 2 Forsaken and can be applied to any single character additional boosts for other characters may be purchased separately. So that's some pretty interesting stuff as well. But that is the bulk of what I wanted to break down in this video. The possibility of yet another vendor coming into the game at some point. It may not be when Forsaken launches, it could be at a later date with an event, or it could be that these things are just showing in the database because they will be in a different version of the game, which is definitely going to mean we could see some interesting stuff at some point in the future. Obviously I'll be keeping you guys posted with Forsaken. I think otherwise, there's a lot of sandbox stuff to talk about this week, new weapons that are going off. I think it's definitely better to take a couple of days before I make any more recommendations on that, but I'll look to keep you guys posted with some more cool details as we go through the week. For now though guys, I very much appreciate you tuning in today. I have posted a lot of stuff about Forsaken, so if you do want to catch up with any of that content, details about new quests, returning exotics, weapons like the Chaperone, even the Lord of Wolves and the Queen Breaker's Bow, as well as a look at a bunch of other exotics. Of course Bungie gave us the new DLC roadmap for year two which you're getting a sneak peek at on screen right now. I'll link a video in the description if you want to know all of the details about that stuff. But I covered all of the patch notes, how to get early Forsaken loot drops and what we know about that, new trailers and all of that good stuff in the past day. So check out my video tab if you want to keep posted with any of it. 
For now though, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this video. I appreciate all of the support you've shown here and I hope you're having fun with update 2.0. Not long to go and we finally get to Forsaken so that's going to be absolutely fantastic. But if you have enjoyed the video guys, a like below is very much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll keep you posted with everything related to Forsaken right here. But for now, whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.